Spider-Man has certainly had his ups and downs in the cinematic universe over the years, which, I mean, that's not uncommon for superhero films. Today, I'm going to look back on the initial five, rank them worst to best. I want to point out that this is my list. It's my opinion. I also want to say that I love you uh, fully and completely. So uh, please don't uh, give me death threats and try to kill me when I give you my list. This is called Movie Feuds. We're not always going to agree. Now let me start with my worst Spider-Man film of all time. I love you! I know, I know. I'm sure this was a letdown for you, but I can't let my emotions get in the way of my opinions. That's just not gonna happen. I need to stay true to the show and to myself, damn it. Even if that means you're gonna break up with me down the road over this. The 2014 installment was hugely disappointing for me. I actually had high hopes from the trailers. It looked more colorful and action packed. There was some interesting casting choices, but holy hell was this a cluster The pacing was god awful. Some of the dialogue was cornier than Batman and Robin. And the three villain scenario once again rears its ugly head to provide overkill with characters not getting the appropriate time to develop. There were some really great effects and Emma Stone was once again the highlight of the new and possibly dead series, but it just wasn't enough to hold up a shoddy script. I'm writing shoddy. Just to reiterate, and this can't be stressed enough, uh, if you were in the middle of the ocean and you were strapped with TNT and there were sharks all around you and guns pointing down, I would still go out there for you. I love you, damn it. I would do anything for you, but I won't do that, meatloaf. I, I won't do that. And I just couldn't get into this reboot. Director Mark Webb, I don't believe that's his last name, went a darker route with his Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, and it just didn't make my dick tingle. It was also no secret that the movie was rushed out so Sony could retain rights to the character, and this had a very cash-grabby feel for me. I think Garfield was a solid Spider-Man, but a very unlikable Peter Parker. The lack of J. Jonah Jameson hurt, too. There just isn't anything inspiring here. Very little web slinging, generic action, and a Me Too Dark Knight attempt just failed in my eyes. I do think Spider-Man 3 is a pretty bad movie, but not for the reason people usually list. Yes, emo Peter Parker was stupid, and yes, there was way too many songs and dances. Sam Raimi was pressured by studios to shoehorn Venom in and basically did it in the biggest f you way possible. Sandman disappears for half the damn movie, and the Green Goblin Jr. is an afterthought. Topher Grace was possibly the worst choice as Venom, and a side note about the emo thing, there is a difference between becoming evil and corrupted from the symbiote, and just looking like a hot topic douche. All that said, this is still a very watchable movie, with some of the best effects and action of the entire Spider-Man run. And even as bad as it gets at times, it still manages to wrap things up in a nice little package. A Spider-Man package. That sounded wrong. Many consider Spider-Man 2 to be the best of the bunch, and it still ranks very highly in most superhero lists. It was pretty slow moving, the dialogue was hammy, Kirsten Dunst was constantly being kidnapped, and Tobey Maguire desperately needed to go to the bathroom based on his facial expressions. That all still rings true, but there's a level of fun here that most superhero films are missing, most movies in general. Then there is that glorious score that rings throughout the series. Octavius is a great villain. He's fully fleshed out, he's sympathetic and evil at the same time, and the action's top notch. I have very fond memories of Spider-Man 1. I grew up with that franchise, and even though I also liked X-Men a little bit more, uh, there's no denying that Spider-Man was really the first superhero film to take things to the next level. X-Men was a good movie. Uh, it had a very minimal budget though, where Spider-Man went all in. This is a triple A Hollywood blockbuster and it sets the table for the future of superhero movies. This is the standard you guys need to keep up in your game. It had a custom built web slinging camera called the Spidey Cam, and a crazy blend of CGI and real life stunts, an over the top villain, and a perfectly nailed tone. Toby will always be Spider-Man for me, and not because he nailed the role of Peter Parker, but because he was so damn likable. He brought his own flavor to the picture, and it would be cool even today to see him suit up again. It won't happen in a million years, but damn it, I can dream. Don't take that from me, you son of a bitch. Uh, I'm sorry, what? wow. Why am I blowing up at you? 
I didn't count that 1977 Spider-Man abortion made for TV movie because uh, this is my show and I don't have to. Hopefully I didn't piss you off too much with my list because I could really use some more views in the future and not less. I will not pander though. I refuse to pander. Is this the perfect order for the Spider-Man movies? Yes, yes it is, but please humor me with yours by posting in the comments. Go ahead and click that YouTube subscribe button if you will, because you're going to want to stay here. Unless you're already here, then just don't, don't do anything. Well, you could head on over to patreon.com slash few nation. Throw a dollar at me if you'd like, if you want to keep me, keep me going here. That'd be cool. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter and all that other rigmarole. And, and you know what? More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. You can also post a comment about what you want me to do next uh, for a worst versus best list. Because this is a thing now. This is what well, I'm doing this now.